And it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in this Welcome back to my uh, series of videos on using Stata for research and statistical programming. I did a video on using local macros and had some requests to put together a more extended example. So we're going to walk through uh, using local macros in the context of a for each loop. We're going to loop over some variables and loop over some numbers. And to make it more interesting, we're going to put them all together into one example. So let me lay out a little bit of the scenario about when you might use this. Let's say you're working on a research project and you've developed a particular regression model you're interested in where you're going to regress your dependent variable y1 on three different independent variables x1, x2, and x3. But you have some other independent variables and dependent variables that you're interested in. So let's just focus on the dependent variable side for a moment. Let's say that we can establish that you have a total of four dependent variables you're interested in. So one way you could approach this problem is what I call a bit of a brute force um, solution, which would be to go ahead and write your first regression model and then copy it and paste it three times and go in there and change the name of your dependent variable. And this will work, um, but it's not very efficient. So if you want to go back and make changes to the dependent variables, it's going to take you some time and of course you run the risk of making errors. Let's go ahead and make the problem even a little more complicated so that in addition to running this model across four different uh, dependent variables that you have a time component that you have some cross-sectional data and you want to run this over time. So here for example going from four models and adding another year I now have eight models and just to make it a little more interesting I'm now going to a model where I have uh, three different years that I'm going to compare 2008, 2010, and 2012. So now I've taken a single regression model, copied it 12 times, changed the if statement to reflect to subset on the year, uh, four times for each, for each uh, a year to kind of list out all the different variables. And you can see that you can begin to get into a situation pretty quickly where it gets complicated and error prone to kind of keep making these changes. So let's go ahead and look at our program and show you how these for each loops work and how they use local macros. Here's the program I've written, and I'm, um, as usual, I like to use a general social survey to demonstrate how to use Stata. Um, I have uh, Stata up and running. We're going to move to that in a minute, but let's just take a look at the program. I'm going to look at four of the sociability variables that are available in the general social survey. Socrel, Socommune, Socfriend, and Socbar. Basically, these questions ask how frequently people visit relatives, uh, visit in their community, socialize with friends, or go out to bars and taverns. Let's go ahead and look at the frequency distribution for this variable. This is across all the years that, um, that these variables were collected. You can see that we have nearly 33,000 cases. So here we have uh, our, no our values from 1 to 7 that indicate the amount of sociability. To my mind, this is a bit backwards, where a value of 1 indicates the most sociability and a value of 7 indicates the least sociability. I would like to see this scale reversed. So the first thing we're going to do is recode each variable, create a new variable, and we're going to use a for each loop to do that to reverse code these particular um, values. Now the way I'm going to do it is to use a little bit of a trick. I've got my original values 1 through 7, and I'm going to define a constant which will be equal to one, val one amount greater than my largest value. So my maximum value is 7, I'll add 1 to that, and my constant will be 8. I'll then take this constant, and from the constant I'll subtract my original value, creating a transformed value that will be flipped or reversed. So 1 will become 7, 2 will become 6, and so forth, down to 7 will become 1. Let's go ahead and look at the code that will produce this. At the top of this program, you can see I've got a for each loop. My uh, basic command on the first line is for each var of var list. So for each is the name of the command, and that's going to uh, tell Stata we're going to be looping over something. Var is a name that I get to pick, and that's going to be a local macro name. And then since I'm look, working with variables here, I'm going to tell Stata that and use the of var lift condition. 
Then I'm just going to list my four variables, soch rel, soch commune, soch friend, and soch bar. And I end the bar with an open curly Q bracket. On the next line, I'm going to go ahead and drop any variables, uh, the new variables I'm creating. I want to make certain that they don't exist in the data set, so I'm going to drop them. And I, I'm going to use the capture uh, command to make certain that if they don't exist, I don't get an error message that stops my program. Now, I'm using uh, local macros here in kind of a, a different way. Notice that I've got this um, uh, accent grave var single quote. So that's going to take the value of var defined in the line above and pop it in right there. But I'm adding to that rev, which uh, in my mind means reverse. So we're going to reverse code these variables. Stata will just treat this as complete text. It'll take the first element of our list, socrel, and it will just attach it to rev. So the first time through the loop, that, that second line will be cap drop soch rel rev. If soch um, rel rev doesn't exist, my program won't stop because I won't, the capture will prevent the error from stopping the program. If it does exist, the variable will be dropped. The next line is to generate a byte variable. And now here's my new variable. So again, I'm going to have a, um, a accent grave ver single quote rev so I'm defining my new variable equal to 8 minus my original variable and then I have on the next line a closed uh, curly bracket so what we're going to do here is every time we loop through this we're going to plug in another one of those variables from socrel to socbar and it will take it'll be located in the local macro var right first time through cap drop socrel rev Generate byte, socrel rev equals 8 minus socrel. Second time through, cap drop, soch commune rev. Generate byte, soch commune rev, 8 minus soch commune, and so forth. So there's our first little set of the loop. Now let's go down here and look at using some other macros and uh, building our regression model. I'm going to combine my local macros and four each loops down below. So I'm going to define three um, local macros. Now this is another use of local macros that's pretty useful. I'm going to define a local macro called demo, short for demographics, and, and put into that the string age, i.sex, and i.race. So age is a variable in the general social survey, sex is a variable, and race is a variable. And I'm using factor notation i dot so that when this is read into regression uh, Stata will know to create uh, dummy variables or indicator variables out of these particular variables. I'm then defining another uh, local macro called hcap short for human capital and that's going to contain the variables or the names educ, uh, respondents education and paeduc which is father's education. And then finally, I'm going to add, um, really this is my major thrust of my research here, I'm going to add a local macro, create a local macro called good, which will contain the text trust, fair, and helpful, which are three variables in the GSS that measure one's uh, willingness to trust others. So we're going to end up running this regression and see if sociability, controlling for demographics, human capital, is related to people's trust. Now down below I've got two for each loops. So remember what our goal is here. Goal number one is I want to run a regression model for four separate, in de four separate dependent variables. So let's start with the inside loop. The inside loop says for each dv of var list, and now I've got those new variables I've created, social reverse, social commune reverse, and so forth. Then on the next line I'm going to use, uh, I've sh used the shorthand di for display, I'm going to skip a line, underscore n, and I'm going to show the text dependent variables equal, and then I'm going to show the, whatever's uh, stored in dv. So first time through, it'll be the name of my um, first dependent variable, second time through, my second dependent variable, and so forth. On the next line, I'm also going to display the year number that I'm processing. We'll come back to that in a minute. The line after that is my actual regression. And notice there that I have regress followed by a whole list of local macros. My dv macro, that's the thing we're going to loop over. My demo macro, my, my demographic macro, my human capital macro, and my um, trust of others or good macro. And then I'm going to use an if statement, 
if year equals equals yet another local macro called num, which we haven't really defined yet. And I'm going to suppress the ANOVA tables and just uh, because this will produce a lot of output, I just want to look at the coefficients. I end this inner loop with that closing curly Q bracket. So once I get into this loop, it's going to run that regression and do all that display work for SOCHREL rev and then for SOCH commune rev and so forth. Let's look at the outside loop. The outside loop says for each num of num list, so I'm not using varilist here, I'm creating a list of numbers. And I've plugged in the three years that I'm interested in, 2008, 2010, and 2012. And you can list numbers here in ranges in, in a typical state of fashion. You can use a beginning, an increment, and an end, uh, or any of the other ways that Stata allows you to look at lists of numbers. So the first time through my loop, num will be equal to 2008. Then I hit the second for each, and dv is equal to soch rel rev. When I display, my dependent variable will be soch rel rev, my year will be 2008, and then it will run the regression, plugging in all the values of the local macros into that regression. My inside loop increments faster than my outside loop. So once I get down there to that, uh, the end of the, the inside loop, Stata will say, are there any more variables in varilist to process? Since we've only processed one and there are four, for the for each loop will go back to the first line of that inside loop. Now it'll go through that um, loop one more time, but instead of using social rev, it'll use social commune rev. So second time through, we've now advanced to our second variable. Again, when it, after it completes the regression, the for each loop basically asks, are there any more variables in the variable list? There's still two more left. So it will go back and process the soch friend reverse. And then at the end of that, it'll process the soch bar reverse. Once it's gone through all four variables, it now advances to the outer loop and says, are there any more numbers to process? Well, the first time we went through the loop, it was 2008. So there's two more numbers, so now 2008 is replaced with 2010 and stored in the local macro num, and we go through the loop again. Are there any variables to process? Yes, there's four elements or four variables in my var list. Let's go ahead and process for 2010, the first one, then the second, the third, and the fourth. Again, once we finish that inside loop, going through all four variables, Stata will advance to the next line and say, are there any more numbers to process in numlist? And we have one more to go. And so 2012 replaces the value of 2010 in the local macro called num. And again, we'll go back and now we'll advance through all four variables. So that's a fairly complicated example in all sorts of ways. We have a loop within a loop. Remember, the inside loop increments or works faster than the outside loop. And that the inside loop here is a var list and the outside loop is a num list. Let's go ahead and look at Stata and um, see what the program looks like in here. Here I've got my program all set up to go, um, just copied over, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and execute this. The GSS is already loaded. And you can see that seemed to run, and let's go right back to the top and see what we've got. We can see that uh, my generating the new variables, uh, lots of missing values because these particular questions weren't asked in every year, but there were no errors. You can see that my local macros for uh, demo, hcap, and good all seem to be created, and you can see the for each loop. Coming down on the first output, you can see that what I displayed, the name of the dependent variable, and the year. And then as we go to the next output, we see that the var variable has advanced to social commune reverse, in 2008, Soch friend reverse in 2008, Soch bar reverse in 2008. Now we're done with 2008, we move on to 2010, but go back to the first variable. And this goes on until we get all the way to the bottom and it finished for the last variable, Soch bar rev, in the last year, 2012. Well, there you go. There's a more advanced example. There's lots of advantages of doing this in Stata when you get into producing lots and lots of models. If I want to go back and add variables uh, to, my to my demographic macro, or if I want to delete a variable, I do it once in one spot in the program for that local macro, and it will affect every regression I run. 
If I want to add more variables as candidates for great dependent variables, I just go ahead and add it to that local macro. Same thing with years. I could remove years or add years. I do it all in one place, and all of my uh, regressions are affected by it. I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. Edits code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happens either.